We were talking earlier about recessive colors and dominant colors. This is just backlight on the object. Let me show you what happens when we turn this like pretty standard blue R68 on in the front. You notice how now we're starting to get three dimensionality out of the entire thing. Now this is just a pretty standard um, everyday blue. It's sort of middle value. Watch what happens when I add red to the blue. I'm actually going to double the saturation, but this can also occur if you just add red. Red to the blue, making it more recessive. We're all starting to pop, it's all starting to pop beautifully now. Now it's, the front image is receding back and the neon is coming forward at us. Without increasing the blue saturation, I can also just add some red to this, same color. Again, you see that's also taking a little bit more recessive. A red blue is more recessive than a green blue. That background now came to the foreground. And if it wants, if you want to take it even more to the foreground, now that background is actually almost coming in front of the neon. It's working against you. That is dominant and recessive. And that is because of the way we perceive the, the, how we're stacked in our eye about what I said about the yellow green cones. Yeah, we're more receptive we have, to yellow green than to anything exactly, else. Exactly, we're more perceptive to yellow green than anything else. As a matter of fact, in lighting design, Yellow green is the one color that I can actually have sit on top of white light as a highlight. Well, see where she put two layers of back paint and then up in the corners there's only one layer of back paint. So you see how important that second layer of back paint is.